this thing is going to rip. So this is my brand new engine. It was five minutes. We are standing here waiting for the myth, the legend, WTF. Terry. William Terry. Shocker, you had to go get a Coke. Today we're in the race shop because the flow bench is here and we are working on the stage two 12 valve head for my personal 98 12 valve daily driver. Now these have never been on the flow bench, at least for, for you, the YouTube audience. So today it's really exciting. We're going to put this stage two power driven ported 12 valve head on the flow bench. Let's start on the easy one. Let's start on uh, cylinder number three here, see how it flows. So what this cool thing does, I guess we're starting cylinder number four because that's how the uh, thing's set up. All right, we're gonna start on the uh, intake side because that's what's lined up. All right, so this head, this head peaked out at 196 CFM. Um, that's pretty decent. Stock heads down in the the 135 to 140 range. You know, I've seen some stock ones where as high as 145 on the intake. You got to remember too, this still has an intake shelf. We didn't, so you can't pour it in there. All you can really do is what you can reach in the bowl. So, getting 196 CFM. Let's say roughly a uh, roughly a, a 60 CFM gain just by working in the bowl. All you can do, not bad. Let's see what the exhaust does. Remember, the exhaust we can work on both sides. And two, getting rid of drive pressure in the exhaust really seems to help with EGTs, reliability, turbo spool up. It seems like the better we can get the exhaust flowing, the the better these things run on the dyno. So let's see what we can get out of this exhaust side. So this exhaust did not disappoint. Peaked out at 222. So it flows four and 22. So 26 CFM more than intake. That's a, that's a great port. Guys, I'm excited about the flow numbers that we got out of this head. This thing is flowing incredible. Over 220 CFM on the exhaust, 200 CFM on the intake. I mean, this thing is going to rip. Let's go get this bolted on my 9812, well, that new engine that's going in my 9812 valve, see kind of horsepower we can make on the dyno. <laughs> standing here waiting for the myth, the legend, WTF, Little Terry. William Terry. Shocker, you had to go get a Coke. It was five minutes to the grocery store and back. I went, soda. I went there, That's I got it. my soda, go the then, then go the our shaft supplier called me and said, I have an uh, emergency, I need oh, to know yeah. something as we're uh -huh. putting together, and I answered him, emergency. and then my mortgage broker called me and said, uh. rates dropped today, we freaking locked you in, and I need to make sure you're happy. I just took care of all that, and here I am. And now you're being your pants. And I got to pee. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to use the restroom. The little boys here. All right, guys, this is my brand new engine. I'm super stoked to see this go back in my truck. 
Now really quick on the truck, you can see this was actually a higher trim level truck, like a SLT or a, I don't even had Laramie back then, but the hood insulation was falling apart. And so the guys ripped it off and put some nice uh, sound deadener. I guess it's called Kill Matte brand they threw on there. Same with the firewall. Firewall insulation was greasy and old, kind of a fire hazard. I've seen trucks burn down. So we got rid of that, put that on there. But enough about that. We don't care about the truck. This is what we care about. We're horsepower junkies. This engine is awesome. We've been calling this a 6.1 liter stroker, but it's actually a 6.0 liter. To make a 6.1, you need a 40 over with the 67488 stroke. This is a standard bore. We didn't want 40 over because we're putting big power and you want as much cylinder wall thickness as possible. So this is a standard wall with open up piston and wall clearance. Let's highlight a couple of the important upgrades on this. We have the same injection pump as run before. It's upgraded, it's a 640 cc pump, but it is nothing special. We're gonna put the same fuel system on and I'll bet you we pick up hundreds of horsepower because we had plenty of fuel before. But getting down to the bottom end, the very first thing we do, when we get over a thousand horsepower, factory rods like this bend, they get S-curved, they can't handle it. With rod bolts, you can turn more RPM and do that, but with, with a factory engine with 300,000, I wasn't gonna pull it apart and put rod bolts and put factory rods back in, because I'm going over a thousand horsepower. The factory pistons, they get a little scuffing on the skirts. So the first upgrades on the bottom end, Waggler Street Fighter rods. Now, if you see these, they're, an, they're, uh, they're, they're kind of economy line of rod. These are a great rod. We've tested these to 1500 horsepower. They're awesome. The big highlights, half inch rod bolts. You can turn RPM with them, stronger beam, and uh, they're affordable. I mean, what more do you want in a performance part? Affordable and works. To me, that's it. They're not quite as beautiful as the, uh, the billet rods, but at the same time, these are still a really good material, good rod, great. The other thing that we get on the big power is bearings. We start having trouble with bearings. So we put some Molly Cleavite H bearings in here. The factory bearings, if we get in a little closer here, they're starting to show copper, which is fine. It has 350,000 miles, but you put big power on factory rods, it'll start smashing the copper out. It's not hard enough. These H bearings are a lot harder, which means they don't swell out and under the power, they, they just hold better. So when we get over a thousand horsepower, you almost need 100% of the time age bearings. Now we'll put these even on a 750 horsepower truck. There's no downside other than they're more expensive than, than uh, lower quality bearings. But for what we're doing, we need these bearings. Pistons, big wide bull Molly piston. These are Molly power pack. They've got a coated skirt. Remember my factory skirts were a little bit scuffed. You got the big bowl here so that we can put a lot of timing and the fuel plume can be wider and it'll still stay in the bowl. That's how we make horsepower. And then these things are just awesome. They're very strong pistons. We've ran these to 1800 horsepower in Todd's truck before we broke them. If you have proper ring gap, if you don't have enough ring gap, we've had them fail at 1200 when the rings butt. So we've added some ring gap, some piston, a wall clearance so they don't scuff, big bowl. This sucker's ready, it's gonna be great. The other thing we had to do with the strokers, we added a big 6.7 crank. To do that, we have to take 80 thousandths off the top of the pistons, and then to clear the cam, we then had to have some valve reliefs cut in. So in the earlier footage you saw, this engine has valve reliefs under the head. Um, firing head gasket, top and bottom. Moving to the top end, we've got our power-driven race conical springs. These are kind of aggressive for a mild street. They're perfect for this type of build, a hot rod weekend warrior. Great, uh, they have great over the nose pressure to control the valve train at higher RPM and um, they work. We decided these power driven upgraded rocker pedestals. Some people call them the bat wings. These things are awesome. We've tested them on my junker drag truck to 1500 horsepower. I'm confident this is great. Before this, you used to have to spend 2000 plus dollars just to get your valve train reliable for this big power level, where now we have a five or $600 upgrade and it's, it's awesome. Um, we put these, these new uh, stainless head studs in here, hold the big power, and uh, that's kind of it. We capped it off with this stage two ported head. You guys saw the flow numbers earlier. Awesome. Excited about this head. Manifold, good paint job. Got a nice billet front cover, adjustable timing gear in there. Stock oil pump. We didn't do a hot rod on this one but we did upgrade the oil pickup tube. So this is a big power driven pickup tube. So we can do some oil pump testing later if we wanted to, or if we start having oil pressure problems, 
I'm probably gonna run a ball bearing, big turbo, so we probably won't have, but if you run two big turbos with journal bearings, generally you need to upgrade the oil system. You start sometimes having hot um, idle oil pressure problems. Billet freeze plugs. Um, oh, tappet cover. You always have leaks. So we've got this nice power driven billet tappet cover. We decided to uh, plug the, the vent holes. We're doing dual valve cover breathers on this. These nice breathers with two of them. We've had good luck controlling the crankcase pressure with just two of these. As this motor gets older and tired, if we start having oil leaks and these aren't enough, then we're gonna have to go back into the tappet cover. And when you get big power, you generally wanna run that to a catch can and we didn't wanna do that just yet. I think on a new motor, we'll be just fine with the dual valve cover breathers, but we put some power driven five by 14 injectors. Those are just for braking. We'll probably be able to make more power with this injector than the old engine did by far, but for braking, we wanna go a little bit milder. We don't wanna wash down cylinders. And then we go for the big power. We're probably gonna put some five by 20s, maybe even some five by 25s in here. We'll just see what we need to get the, the power that we want. Sometimes these 12 mil pumps do better with a five by 20 than a 25, but I, I promise you, we're gonna test it and see what makes the most power on this engine. That's pretty much it, guys. This is my motor. So it's a six liter stroker because the standard bore with a six, seven crank, not a 6.1. So you guys out there that want a 6.1, you need to do a 40 over. If you want a 6.4, which is common, you need a 6.7 Cummins with a 5.9 crank. So you can't get a 6.4 on a 12 valve block. There's not enough meat in the parent bores to, to bore them out that big. So guys, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm installing all this stuff. I got wonderful employees that help with a lot of this stuff. So you're probably gonna see them and doing it, but I kind of watch. I wanna make sure they're not scratching my nice, my nice beautiful painted truck. And, um, let's get to it. Maybe I'll do a little bit of the work. We'll see.